Okay, good afternoon again. It is um, noon time, and yes, boy, my mind is really thinking. Um, I'm watching a video right now, and it's on YouTube. It's entitled Ancient Knowledge Full Movie. It has a lot of views, it has over 1 million views, and um, it's a powerful video. And I got to a part in the video, I mean a lot of it is really, really interesting. But this one part in particular, I want to play for this, Life, this tape. And um, this is an individual who's speaking with regard to thought and matter. And, uh, and it's, about, it's just a couple of minutes long. I'm going to play it right now. Well, two possibilities. Creation. He's took or about spontaneous um, generation. Matter. There is no third way. Spontaneous generation was disproved 100 years ago, but that leads us to only one other conclusion, that of supernatural creation. We cannot accept that on philosophical grounds. Therefore, we choose to believe the impossible, that live life arose spontaneously by chance. End quote. See, what he's, what he's saying there is that Science has to be conducted in a naturalistic vacuum. On philosophical grounds, we can't follow the evidence wherever it leads if it leads us outside the natural realm, to a metaphysical realm, to a supernatural realm. We have to stay within this naturalistic, materialistic box. This in 1954, the idea here is that science will ultimately answer all of these questions. But the last thing that we want to do is jump into some kind of philosophical or theological explanation. It's interesting that 30 years later, in 1984, the late George Wald again gave us another quote. This was called Life and Mind in the Universe, and he actually was okay, speaking at the Quantum Biology Symposium. But here's what he said 30 years after the quote I just read you. It has occurred to me lately, I must confess, with some shock, at first to my scientific sensibilities, that both questions, meaning the origin of consciousness in humans and of life from non-living matter, might be brought into some degree of congruence. This is with the assumption that mind, rather than emerging as a late outgrowth in the evolution of life, has existed always as the matrix, okay. the source and condition of physical reality. The stuff of which physical reality is composed is mind stuff. Wow. It is mind that has composed a physical universe that breeds life and so eventually evolves creatures that know and create science, art, and technology-making animals. In them, the universe begins to know itself. This again was 1984 by the late George Wall, an agnostic and materialist naturalist. You hear that? Now I thought this was really interesting. Stop it, Lily. I'm sorry, my dog. I thought this was very interesting. He's saying, you know, like the, the chicken or the egg, which one came first? That, um, hold on a moment that what came first was our thoughts, our, our, our um, consciousness, not thought, our, our consciousness came first and it's our consciousness that created the physical world as we know it. Okay? And not only that, but that means even our planets, you know? Um, everything that we see in the physical realm. He said that, that it was a consciousness that, 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 that facilitated it. That the, the physical world does not precede the consciousness. But consciousness precedes the physical realm. Even still, they, they mention in the same video about um, about illnesses, like someone could, could have an illness, and then you have, uh, then the, you give them a placebo, and that oftentimes that person who is sick, when given the placebo, gets better. So the mind or the consciousness of that person uh, cause a change in their physical body 
to make them feel better. This is really something. So what does this have to do with now in, in my spirit journey? That my consciousness preceded Wow, my, my consciousness preceded my body. That, wow, this is really something. So I existed before my body existed. This is really something. So maybe, you know, so if this is the case that our consciousness uh, form, uh, could form the physical realm, Maybe this matrix, so, oh, they were saying that the matrix is consciousness. So, maybe with this whole war is that our consciousness is being suppressed. We're becoming um, disconnected from our consciousness and that the evil out there, the, the Anunnaki, that they're presented to us um, thoughts, you know, makes us angry, sad, you know, all these emotions. And these emotions can affect our body, our physical, you know, our physical body. And thus, we can do things in the physical realm based on those feelings. So, you know, they want to start a war, but they can get us feeling angry with one another, and war happens. So it's another way of manipulating and getting somebody, someone else's will done, you know? But once we're connected to our consciousness, we have, we have a stronger hold on our outcomes. So this is just food for thought, and I'm really excited about this spiritual journey. Take care.